Moving on, the Constitutional Court's ruling ordering political parties to disclose private funders has been widely welcomed. Yesterday, the court gave Parliament 80 days to amend parts of the promotion uh, to Access of Information Act. The Free Market Foundation's Martin van Staden now joins us in studio to chat about the importance of this ruling. Good morning to you, Martin. Thank you very much for joining us here on Afro Worldview. It's, it's our pleasure. First and foremost, I think let's just chat briefly about your reaction to Chief Justice Mokhweng Mokhweng's ju uh, judgment yesterday. Well, from a, a purely legal perspective, I think it was a good judgment. Uh, there is definitely a right to know who um, funds our political parties. That is discernible from a reading of the Constitution, especially the right to political activity read with the right to access to information, where anyone has a right to access information if it's relevant to the enforcement of their rights. So uh, from that purely legal perspective, uh, I'm, I'm pretty, pretty happy with, with the judgment, although uh, we do have concerns about some of the unintended consequences that, that may flow from this judgment and the bill that's currently before Parliament on this topic. Mm. You speak of unintended consequences. If you could elaborate, please. So uh, it's, it's a broader legislative problem in our regulatory environment in South Africa. So Section 1C of the Constitution says that South Africa is founded upon the supremacy of the Constitution and the rule of law. And uh, the rule of law has several principles, one of which mean, uh, says that Parliament cannot assign to the executive government so wide a discretion that an official can on his own uh, whim basically come to a, a decision uh, without regard to the, um, to the law uh, as it stands by Parliament. So uh, we believe that the political party funding bill, which is currently in, in Parliament, may have uh, downstream effects on the funding of, of opposition parties especially, because uh, individuals associated with large companies mostly, but not exclusively, uh, will feel a fear that they may be intimidated by the executive government in their industries, especially mm -hmm. by their regulators. Uh, for example, someone associated with a large bank, uh, is, uh, banks are very heavily regulated by uh, institutions like the Financial Services Board or the, Res the Reserve Bank, and they may want to withhold funding uh, from opposition parties in the fear that their license may be revoked, uh, that they may not uh, have, have their, uh, their uh, permits renewed, uh, things like that, uh, because um, these institutions and government have such wide discretionary powers. So while the bill is actually good, we certainly have a right to know who funds our political parties. Mm -hmm. uh, there may be unintended consequences which we need to be aware of. Mm. Martin, yesterday, just before that judgment, Chief Justice Mokhweng Mokhweng spoke on a number of issues, one of them being corruption, uh, the other being transparency, and obviously the voters' right to know so that they can make a better mm. uh, informed decision when they go and make their, their ex during e elections. Mm. Um, how do you think this will change voting in South Africa? Well, that, that's definitely an open question. So we've never had transparency with who funds our political parties. So uh, we can't look back and then uh, from this point forward say this has changed. Uh, everything before uh, the bill is passed will be still shrouded in secrecy. So uh, it, it, it's not really clear uh, how, how it will affect voting. Um, my personal opinion, it, it probably won't. Uh, a lot of South Africans... Um, vote based out of loyalty and so forth. Uh, it's, uh, who funds our political parties hasn't seemed to be a very a relevant consideration in, in how people vote. It hasn't really been part of the discourse, uh, really, uh, to the same extent that other things are. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so I'm not sure that it will have such a big impact. Uh, our concern is mostly with the resources that parties will have going forward. Uh, uh, running an election campaign is an insanely uh, expensive uh, venture. And uh, with, with this bill being passed uh, in light of the Constitutional Court's judgment, a lot of those resources may dry up, uh, which, which would be unfortunate. Okay. Martin, just, just as a point of, of clarity, we do know that there were public hearings held in mm. Parliament around this issue as well. But after the judgment uh, handed down by Chief Justice Mokhoeng Mokhoeng yesterday, does this mean that this needs to be implemented now? What is the process going forward? Uh, there is a talk around 80 days. Just talk us through the process that will be followed going forward now to implement. All right, so there was a high court judgment before the constitutional court judgment that made a similar order, and that is where the political party funding bill came from. Uh, Parliament reacted to the, the high court judgment and said we are introducing this legislation to implement that. Uh, that the political party funding bill uh, does not go quite as far as the judgment, uh, including the constitutional court judgment, uh, requires, which is also to include individuals uh, running uh, not as part of a party. Uh, so they also have funding, uh, especially on the local level. Um, so the bill may need to be amended by Parliament before it passes it to, um, 
to also cover uh, individuals uh, who are not uh, independent candidates, basically. Um, so it has already been passed by the uh, National Assembly, I believe, uh, and so the, the bill will probably need to uh, go back. And uh, that's, that doesn't uh, speak to the, the protection of uh, the promotion of Access to Information Act, which will also need to be amended. That has not happened at all. So there will be uh, the amendment to that act and the political party funding bill. So uh, the political party funding bill has already started its process. Uh, PIA needs to uh, come next. Okay. Martin, earlier you spoke about the cost involved in an election campaign and you spoke uh, briefly about the fact that it is quite uh, mm. costly. How do you think um, this new ruling will, will affect uh, the survival of some of the smaller political parties mm. and what, what sort of knock-on effects do you think we will see there? Well, that, that is the concern. Uh, so small parties are um, presumably uh, reliant on, on a, a very small number of donations, likely from high, higher profile people. Uh, and, uh, and, and it may even just be local politicians in local areas and so forth. And uh, with the, um, the sunlight being shown on this and these people now having to uh, be publicly funding these parties, it may lead to them completely uh, withdrawing their funding uh, in, in fear of, of intimidation. Uh, and, and that is a big concern. Uh, the, for the ruling party, that concern isn't necessarily there yet because it's, it's very unlikely that uh, the ruling party's own regulators are going to bully their own funders. Mm -hmm. uh, but for opposition parties, it's an open question. Now, we're not saying there will be intimidation, but there is, there is certainly a perception of corruption among South Africa's uh, people and just the fear that they may be intimidated or that they may be bullied uh, because they fund opposition parties will likely be enough to have them withdraw their funding. Mm -hmm. So uh, there may be no regulatory bullying, but, but the fear will be enough for, for, um, to break the back of the funding of opposition parties. And mm -hmm. that is our concern. We believe that it, it may be a bit premature in South Africa's democracy to have legislation of this kind, uh, perhaps down the line when this issue of discretionary powers uh, in, in, in legislation has been fixed. Mm, you speak of it being one of your concerns. What sort of safety nets can one then implement in such a situation? Well, that, that, is, that is the question, and, and our only uh, real uh, suggestion uh, is, is to, for Parliament to have a legislative review, uh, look at uh, especially a le legislation that regulates particular industries, for example, the Electronic Communications Act that regulates the ICT industry, and just constrain regula regulators' discretion a little bit so that um, how they come to their decisions is uh, guided by criteria, guided by legal principles, rather than just making a decision in the so-called public interest or making a decision uh, based on whether they are uh, satisfied that uh, some, some state of affairs is present. And that's how legislation is usually worded. It says the minister may choose not to renew the license if he is satisfied that X, Y, and Z. That is an unfettered discretion. That needs to go if we want legislation like the political party funding bill to work. Sure. Mr. Van Staden, thank you very much for your time this morning. We appreciate you talking to us and shedding some light on this issue. That was the Free Market Foundation's Mr. Martin Van Staden joining us uh, in studio this morning to chat about that uh, judgment that was handed down by Chief Justice Mukweng Mukweng yesterday.